playing against Simon Stahl, playing blue white control. Now, is it is uh, the match score correct? Are we at 1-0 uh, in favor of Junk? No, I believe that Simon won the first game. Okay, yes, that's what I thought. So again, game one, a little tough for this Junk mid range deck. Not a lot of great tools against Revelation decks. Post board, he gets to convert into something resembling a mono black devotion deck. Right. Uh, that uh, happens to also have a nice little Planeswalker element. Yep. So here's a Thought Seize. Simon Stahl, plenty of lands in play. A Jace Architect Thought on one counter. This Thought Seize reveals an Azorius Charm, a Jace, a land, a Celestial Flare, and a Sphinx's Revelation. Uh, what are you looking at here besides, uh, I mean, is Sphinx's Revelation just the only choice? I, I think it has to be. I mean, the, this Junk deck is all about trading one for one. I don't, I don't feel like you can afford to allow a large revelation to resolve. So that thought sees successfully takes the revelation, although Simon's still with a backup source of card advantage with that Jace in his hand. Now he does have access to uh, two more underworld connections, plus potentially even abrupt de decay and Golgari charm to make sure that, that uh, he just keep, keeps getting to connect. So you see the connections reapplied onto the Golgari Guildgate. This is one of the real big advantages of this junk mid-range deck is that it has the most connections and ways to keep its connection working through detention spheres of any deck in the format. Yeah, Mono Black Devotion, when it gets hit with a detention sphere, it just says, okay, well, right. that happened. You got it. Yep. A hit with Immuta Vault from Simon, dropping Ryan down to 11. I like it. I mean, if you can't stop him from connecting, at least you can give him the business. Yep. Taxes light toll a little bit. Here's a detention sphere that Simon drew. Take care of the connections again. And it looks like Simon's also found another Sphinx's Revelation, too. Real big. And that's the turn. Simon draw, uh, Ryan rather draws a fifth land as a forest. It appears that he does have an Obstad in his hand. He can just deploy this turn. It's not bad. Simon's deck not flush with a lot of answers. Yeah, I mean, Last Breath is, and Detention Sphere and Supreme Verdict are not exactly going to do it. Oh. So there is an Obstad. That's going to trigger. And Ryan phases it out. So I'm going to go ahead and cash in his Jace. He does have Celestial Flare. Do you think there's any chance that Gerhardt, well, now that he knows that it's coming? Well, Gerhardt may split this in such a way where Simon gets to take the Muta Vaults and that, then Celestial yeah. Flare out of hand. Although, Ryan is aware from the Thought Seize previously, yep. so he may be just very conservative with this Obstat. Yeah, you don't, know, you don't always see the uh, the life gain matter that much against blue white control, but this might actually be one of those games. With uh, Gearheart having access to three connections and lots of ways to keep getting him back, he's going to be necroing, so to speak, much harder than usual. Yep. So Ger uh, Gerhard splits Celestial Flare versus the two Muta Vaults. Simon takes the two Muta Vaults and sends the turn back. Obzat returns. And that's actually a pretty solid amount of beatdown. I mean, three Muta Vaults is, you know, that's no joke. That's a lot of attackers. Especially when Ryan's life total is already going to be taxed just through the connections as well. Exactly. Maybe. So we'll see how Ryan wants to proceed here. He's aware that he cannot attack currently because of that Celestial Flare. There's a Golgari charm on the connections. Simon says, that's fine. Connections return. It's on the forest. Ryan's going to draw a card. And his hand is not, not really well suited to, to go forward this turn. A hero's downfall, 200 world connections into Palacronos. 
Here's a big rev. Best for five. Finds mostly lands. So, so I'm going to start at the turn, it looks like, by resolving a Jace. We'll see if he's going up or down. Since he's about to discard a hand size, I imagine he's going up. He does. Jace is now at five. There's an island. And Simon moves to discard, throws away an island. But this hope set appears to be problematic for Simon, the way this game is proceeding. Ryan draws a thought seize. A big advantage of thought seize here outside of taking something, getting to just see, you know, see what the next couple turns look like. See that Simon doesn't actually have that much strength for a guy who just revs for five. Uh -huh. So Ryan starts off by drawing a card with the connections. He's going to go ahead and thought seize. Simon pulls the rev forward. I wonder if he's considering revving for two here. Decides against shows. Celestial flares, a Sphinx's revelation, and some lands. Not a lot going on. Yeah, I mean, if you take the rev here and then just chill to the next episode. Yep. You're actually in not that bad of a spot. I mean, there is the danger of just allowing the, the blue-white player with the Jason play to kind of sit, but... Supreme Verdict also amongst the cards that are revealed here. Have to imagine this is Revelations. Yeah. I mean... What's the third Celestial Flare even doing for him? Yeah. It does mean the Gearheart needs to race through his deck and find a way to interact with that Jace. Well, I think he, he may have Hero's Downfall in hand, in well, which nice. case this is very easy. Oh, yeah. And there goes the Revelations. These blue-white decks are a lot less impressive when you make them fight fair. Oh, yeah. When well, they're not revving against you. <laughs> as fair as a deck full of Supreme Verdicts and Jaces and Elspeths can be. Right. But those are at least something resembling a normal magic card. <laughs> as opposed to Sphinx's Revelation, which is... Kind of an abomination. Going to go with Palakronos instead. Interesting. And faces out the Obsidat. How do you feel about that Palakronos there? Yeah, I don't know. I like drawing as many cards as I possibly can when you, you know your opponent has a verdict and three celestial flares. There's time to play the Palakronos later. Mm -hmm. But I guess he wants to th hold off the Muta Vaults. So Simon just pluses Jace. He drew Revelations this turn. Oh, wow. That's a game changer. Ryan going to go ahead and draw another card off the connections. Finds wow. Miscutter Hydra. Another big one. But three Celestial Flares. I mean that Miss Cutter Hydra is going to have to be part of a long-term plan. Yeah, Simon has definitely come prepared for these Obsidat and Miss Cutter Hydra type of threats. Yeah, four Celestial Flares is not messing around. Ryan trying to figure out how to proceed here. Knows he can't really attack effectively right now.
Yeah, he's got a he's got to race through his deck, draw some more cards, find some discard, and uh, just try to do this the slow way. There's another connections. Trying to find some way to power through all this removal. Yeah, I mean, Hero's Downfall would be good. Uh, discard is a start. Uh, Planeswalker would be fine. And doesn't do anything else here. Oh, and there's the big revelations. That looks like a seven spot right there. Yeah, that's not, not a bad little, uh, little taste of uh, cards in life. Looks like he has found an Aetherling amongst his cards. An Aetherling at about half a dozen land. Yeah, it's been kind of, <laughs> kind of funny because these have been fairly anemic revelations all told, but it kind of doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, I mean, not losing the next 12 draw phases combined with having a, you know, more than double the life total. Very important. So Jace pluses again. And he has a detention sphere left over in all of this as well. So you can either deploy Aetherling with mana up or clear away all the detention spheres. Yep, it's too early for Aetherling, as that would leave him without uh, the ability to Celestial Flare. So, Simon and said just happy to pass the turn completely back. He is threatening to go ultimate with Jace in two turns. So no big rush. No big rush. No big rush for Simon. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Gearheart's looking at a... He's got to get something going. Yeah, he's got about two turns before stuff is, like, real bad. And part of the issue is here is, is Gearheart really hasn't been able to chain together two relevant spells in a turn. No. No, it's been tough. I mean, he's drawing cards, but his Underworld connections have been only slightly better than the, uh, the Sphinx's revelations in terms of the average quality. The hero's downfall, though, was huge. I mean, that's exactly, I mean, that's what the doctor ordered right there. And the big connections twice, finds a hero's downfall on the land. Plays an untapped goblet shrine. Zero care is given. Tap straight, it looks like we're going to be moving for a hero's downfall in this chase. It is, and it works. But again, no big follow-up, no chaining together of multiple relevant spells. And again, just phases out Obsidat. So Simon starts off the action here, Detention Sphere. That's gonna take care of these connections. Plays an untapped island. Tap six. Here is Aetherling. And now this is an Aetherling. This is the showdown. Now this is the Aetherling with Celestial Flare backup and the ability to protect itself. Yep. This is where Simon makes his move. And Simon can even afford to take a hit from this Obstat. Yeah, if it comes to that. So how to proceed from here? I mean, it doesn't even appear like he has a way to blow up this detention sphere. What he does have is Miskit or Hydra. How does that factor in? Uh, he can try to piece together, you know, he can try to just say, okay, 
here comes uh, here comes Biscar Hydra attack with both. You only have enough mana Celestial Flare one. Absolutely. Which is not the worst. At least it's something. Yeah. But again, Simon's life total is so high at this point. I think Ryan was contemplating there potentially trying to hero his downfall to phase the Aetheling out to sides against. Draws an abrupt decay, which is not shabby here. At least it hits the detention sphere on counterable and instant speed and gives you a, a lot more connecting. Now, if, if Ryan attacks here, do you actually flare if you're Simon? Leave yourself open to the double uh, d double downfall. Probably not. I think you probably just block and phase out. Mm. So there's that abrupt decay. The connections are unleashed. But Ryan has to start being really conscious about his life total here. These Aetheling hits are going to kill him very quickly. Yeah, I mean we're talking three hits. It's going to get cracked. Oh no, it's actually even. I mean, if Simon goes all in, it's two hits. Now he does have some heroes downfalls to fog some attacks. He's got a little bit to play with, but... Yeah, a single hero's downfall actually buys him two attacks. Because of the life gain from Amzadat. So Ryan finds... Or did, before this connecting took, it, took its toll on him. Also keep in mind, Simon has access to quite a few Muta Vaults as well. Oh yeah. Three, appears three in fact, so a lot of pressure. Is this the defensive Muscular Hydra? Oof. <laughs> Might be. I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. Again, multiple consecutive turns of Ryan not being able to piece together two spells that matter. Looks like he, Simon's going ahead and pushing these Muta Vaults up. Here they go. Here's an attack for 10. We'll see if Simon wants to pump to try to force this to be lethal. Oh, surely he must. No pumps. I think he knows something is up. I think he's just not buying it. Mm. And so those three meter vaults come across. There's a temple post combat. Wow, a dissolve on top is just what he wanted to see. Yep. How and then comes back as his obsidat. Ryan how, moves up to seven. How many games do you see somebody have an obsidat and play for 10 turns? have access to all the connections they want and still not be able to power through. Yeah. Says quite a bit about Sphinx's revelation. <laughs> yeah. I mean, this Obsidian landed so many turns ago on an empty board. Yep. Celestial Flares also played a huge role. Yeah. If Ryan could have just cobbled together more attackers, maybe he could have pushed through, but so many Supreme Verdicts and random one-for-one -one removal has just never been able to generate a spot where Obsidat's able to attack alongside enough creatures to power through the Celestial Flares. And Ryan's hand just has nothing really going on. No. Squire land. That's an abrupt decay of no value here. Puts it to the bottom. Uh, without an without a uh, element, you know, possibility of fogging the aether wing. This is game right here, right? Yeah, I mean, he has to play another connections and spin his wheels again. 
But even then, he won't have enough blockers for the uh, yeah. the three muta vaults. And oh. I guess in theory, does he have enough mana to connections, draw a card, draw an answer to a throwing, and still have an answer to uh, or, and cast a you know cast a one one miscutter hydra to chump with and leave the opposite out in play, so that he drops to two. Potentially, but these are desperate times. There's the duress. Shows two celestial flares, two supreme predicts, and a land. I think we might be at the end of the road for Ryan Gearhart. Yep. Hell of a run this weekend, but. Simon Stahl might just be too strong today. And this to me feels like the one matchup that, that Junk would really like to avoid. Oh yeah. Post board there's a recipe at least, but even still, the blue white deck is just so efficient. Not trying to mix and match together pieces. Hopes that faces out. We do. We know that there's a dissolve and there's a concession. Simon Stahl wins two games to zero over Ryan Gearhart playing junk mid range. Advances to the finals where Lauren Nolan awaits. Intense. We're going to have a mono black versus Esper, or I guess blue white control mirror. 